Hi, I'm Ron Landis. Welcome to my studio. Uh, we're going to do a little explanation of uh, how we set up this press. Um, this is our punch press, kind of our workhorse. There are lots of different types of punch presses out there. Um, this is what's referred to as a crank press. You can see just from a crank, kind of like you see in a, a motor, it's just got a cammed crank up there. Uh, this type of crank press in particular, that's kind of a broad term, this is what's referred to as an OBI, which is an open back inclinable, which is has an open back and the whole thing can tilt, but it's probably about the most common crank press there is these days. Um, but we don't utilize those functions. We just are after the, the crank itself. Mostly, of course, in the business of coins and metals, most things are round. Um, so the setup is, is fairly simple in terms of, uh, in, in this case, we use uh, what's called just a, an open tool. Um, a lot of times in, in some of your larger operations or more high speed operations, um, all of the blanking uh, or stamping is done uh, inside of a die set, which is a, a, an entire system of tools um, used for lining up the, the punch and die and, and used for making sure everything stays lined up and the clearances stay the same. Um, in this case, it's just what's called an open tool. Uh, meaning we just have a, a hammer and an anvil that's set up independently of each other. Um, you know, everything we do uh, here at, at Landis Studios is um, very hands-on. Um, you know, we, we both come from different aspects of the industry and, you know, we've I've managed much larger operations and much bigger machinery and, and things like that. But one of the benefits of coming back and, and working with Ron has been just the ability to do a lot of stuff by hand again and, and kind of return to that craftsman aspect. So it's, it's something that I really appreciate um, being able to, to come from, you know, much bigger operations and much more, frankly, high stress and high output situations to, um, you know, handcrafted, uh, handmade stuff. Two hours later. I digress. Most of what we do is in circles. The setup's fairly simple, and really what you're looking at here is a punch and a die. And it's quite simply just a, uh, a very heavy duty cookie cutter, if you will. Um, this was actually invented by Leonardo da Vinci specifically for coin making. Uh, prior to the invention of the punch and die, uh, parts were hand cut. Uh, using large shears and then adjusted um, using files and whatnot to get the weight you need. So the advent of the punch and die actually allowed for uh, the fabrication of the exact same shape, diameter, whatever it may be, over and over and over in a repeatable fashion. And of course the punch and die took over industry uh, and for a long time was responsible for making all kinds of parts. I mean, to this day, everybody's very familiar with the term tool and die shop. Um, but it was invented specifically for coin making. Uh, in this case, however, it's not round. Uh, this punch and die is for the picks that we make with Landis picks, for the finger picks. And in this case, we actually have kind of an odd shape. So the setup is a little different um, in terms of how we get it all lined up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, break it down and, and put it back together so that you can see how we get it lined up and, and get it tuned in and, and ready to roll. And so first off, we'll just we'll, we'll break it free so that you can kind of see from the, from the start. We can see the shape of the not round. <laughs> so here we have the die. It's already broke free. We've got that loose. Um, we're also going to loosen up this hammer. Kind of an overkill hammer here. Does the job. Make sure that's broke free. So first we're going to put it in there and uh, kind of just eyeball it loosely. We're not going to crank down on it yet. Um, we're just going to make sure that it's, it's secure and it's not going to fall out. But you can see that I've still got some play in there because we're going to need that play to get the clearance lined up. There is a clearance between the punch and die that allows for the breaking of the material. And so what we'll do is just cycle it by hand. I'll just pull down a little and, and I'll, I'll engage the press by hand. 
This allows the crank to come down. You can see the crank motion here. So there's a, a can inside that crank that allows for it to come down. Now as it's approaching the base here, I can see that it's pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lift it up. There's an adjustment here in the, in the screw that allows me to adjust the, the depth of that. And what I'm looking for is bottom dead center. I'm waiting for this to, and I can just do this by eye um, on a nice small press like this. Um, and bring it up a little more. I don't want any contact there yet. And see, I get down there and I'm at bottom dead center. Not much movement there. And so now what I'm after is getting that die to plunge, or that punch to plunge into that die. And what I have here is just a piece of plastic. And together this is about six thousandths of an inch thick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna place that in here. Um, you could do this by eye, but this is a, a trick an old tool and die guy taught me. He actually used nylon, which was a really cool, because it stretches real well. Um, but plastic in this case will work just fine. Uh, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna take up the clearance between the punch and the die and it's gonna get it nice and centered. Like I said, you can do that by eye, especially when doing circles. Um, and you can do it by hand and by feel, and you do get a touch for it. Um, I've also seen people put light underneath so that they can see the, sh the, the light and the shadow around. Um, but I have found over time that this is the quickest and most effective method uh, when dealing with extremely tight tolerances. Uh, because it just it takes up that clearance perfectly all the way around. Okay, so now again, that's still loose in there. And this is loose in here. Uh, so what we're after is to sink that. We're going to bring it down slowly. And uh, the difficulty is, is finding that hole. still loose everywhere. So what I want to make sure is that I take up the take up the clearance that's in that loose die first. That'll set that in place. And this is where we're going to tighten the punch. Now we've got to that's make sure we got the clearance taken them there, give it a little shimmy, make sure I'm kind of in the middle. Now we're gonna lock down the, the die sheet here. So when I bring this back up, you can see a nice even, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. You can see how well it took up the clearance. But at this point now, if I cycle it again, you can see I'm happy with the clearance. I kind of inch it in there nice and slow, and I know that it's going to pass through nice and clean. But the difference is, is now if you look, you can set this depth, and it's going pretty deep right now. And what we're after is what's called a break clearance. And there's flat spot uh, just inside the die where it's referred to as a landing. And when the piece gets blanked, you really only need the punch to push through the material enough to break the piece out of the strip. And anything beyond that, you're increasing tool contact time, you're increasing uh, all kinds of clearance issues, you're, you're, you're basically going beyond what's necessary. So what we want to do, and this is Again, in high-tech industry, you can get very complicated. We're doing, you know, it's, it's not very complicated. We're not, we're not going to overcomplicate it here. We're actually just going to do it by eye. Um, and what I'm going to do is, since this is still loose, I'm going to bring it down again to, to bottom dead center. And I'm going to bring it out of the hole again.
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna look by eye. You could, you could put a mark on here, you could do, you could actually measure your strip. Um, there's a lot of ways, uh, you know, that as you're learning to do this, that, that you, you uh, adapt to. Um, but in this case, I know the strip, you know, it's somewhere around 0 0.042, 0 0.05, somewhere in there. Um, so I know that my eye is gonna look for this little spot. And what I'm gonna look for is, I'm gonna go just below that breaking point. And that's as far as I'm going to need to go because what's going to happen is it's going to break that material and it's going to leave it inside that landing. And uh, that's as far as I need to go. And now in this case, with it at the bottom, again, I that locks the nut in, tighten that nut down. And bring it back up. Now as far as the clearances and everything go, that is ready to be stripped, that's ready to punch. Now, if I was to just run a strip through here, uh, what happens is it, it goes through the hole and, and it gets stuck. Uh, so what we need is we have to have some way of stripping that off. Uh, when I'm doing uh, circles, we actually use a urethane stripper. Um, and, and many of you, uh, will be familiar with some of your open tools. Uh, some of you jewelers are familiar with the urethane strippers where they just, uh, they hug your punch and, and it pushes, it basically acts as a spring to keep that material off. Um, on shapes like this, that's a, a, a little more difficult. Um, yeah, arguably we could do that. We could manufacture a piece of urethane we fit around that. But what's easier is we use what's referred to as a stripper plate. And what I've done is I've, I've taken just a piece of, of sheet steel here and I've uh, harrowed out this shape that's going to allow for the clearance of that die. Uh, I've just got some simple spacers. Uh, I'm just using nuts uh, right now that works just fine. They're a little, uh, they're thicker than the, the strip that's going to go through there. Uh, I've got this one so there's not any adjustment. It's already zeroed in, centered in, uh, and what I do is I'm just going to put that on there and uh, bolt this down. And so now, this is just a piece of scrap pewter. This isn't actually what we make the, the picks out of, but it, for demonstration purposes it'll give you an idea of what's happening here. Um, so now what I have is the ability to uh, put this, pass this strip through, you know, I've got the clearance uh, through the tool itself, and all I have to do is line it up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn the press on and put the air to it. It's got an air clutch. I don't have to engage it by hand. And, uh, and I'll punch a few pieces through so that you can see that process. This is our uh, friendly reminder. Um, this is OSHA approved uh, safety warning uh, that, that this is dangerous equipment. Um, you know, I've got 23, 24 years of experience uh, running uh, this type of equipment and uh, I still have to be careful. Uh, this machine in particular, actually, I watched it take the tip of the finger off uh, of, a, of an old partner. So this specific machine, um, so I went online and I bought a whole bag of severed fingers from some gag place in China and I was leaving him around the shop for a couple weeks <laughs> to remind him of uh, the mistake he made um, because gallows humor is by far one of the funniest types of humor. Yeah, that's just a friendly safety reminder that everything we do uh, to not lose focus, uh, safety first, right?